Welcome. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we're so delighted that you've welcomed us into your home. We know what an honor and a privilege it is to be there. Send us an email with any question or comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN. Com. And today we have a lovely couple on our Amen. show, Campbell and Christy Miller, who are parents of special needs children. Now, Campbell is a producer and a director for EWTN, and he um, produced a movie called Hope, Our Lady of Knock, which I hope many of you have seen. Saw we saw that. It was lovely. And then Bravery Under Fire. The story of Father Willie Doyle, who is a chaplain. That's right. And it was a wonderful, First World War. yeah, it was beautiful, uh, so very well done. And um, you can get both of them and religious catalogs. So just go to EWTNRC.com for those DVDs. And it will be a great encouragement to your family. You will be enriched, you will be blessed. There's a lot of good resources there at EWTNRC.com. I just wanted to take a moment to remind everyone that tomorrow mm -hmm. is the Feast of the Ascension. It's a holy day of obligation. Most places it's moved to Sunday. But uh, it really, that is the official day, is Thursday. So we shared about this on Monday, mm -hmm. about meditating upon, learning more about the ascension and the greatness of it. Our Lord's body being lifted up into heaven and that uh, we will be lifted up in him and spend eternity in a glorified mm -hmm. body if we persevere to the end and have faith in him. It is a great, great feast day that we need to understand the ascension is a great source for hope with all of the hurts and wounds and degradation of the human body and wars and violence and everything that happens to the human body. Jesus Christ has the last word mm -hmm. in, in the ascension and we want to be with him. And then that's Thursday, starting on Friday, uh, you should start praying the novena to the Holy Spirit. And there's a couple of those novenas. One is just a straight up novena to the Holy Spirit. The other one has to do with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Um, but if you're interested in that prayer to the Holy Spirit, you can find it on EWTN.com or you could just email us, jimandjoy at EWTN.com, jimandjoy at EWTN.com. But let's take nine days to prepare for the coming of the Holy Spirit, as if the ascension is not enough. Now Jesus said, I'm going to give you another advocate. I told you about this one. He's coming upon you. My Father's going to send him to you, the Holy Spirit, to, so that we might grow in our intimacy intimacy with Jesus and intimacy with the Father, that we might say, Abba, Father, Daddy, and the Holy Spirit witnesses to us, I'm a child of God. Mm. I really am a child of God. And I will one day be with him face to face and to give us power, power to bear witness to Christ, to be converted ourselves and to call the nation and the world to conversion to Jesus Christ. Well, and in this time where we find ourselves believing that our bodies, right, will be lifted up and that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. During this pandemic time, mm -hmm. we want to be better stewards of our bodies um, because the Lord is going to raise them up, right? right. And so you want to take good care of yourself um, the best as you can mm -hmm. with exercise and diet and going to the doctor and making sure all is well so um, you live as long as you're supposed to live also that your days would not be shortened mm -hmm. so that's an exciting time that's and it. we've learned a lot about that. Campbell and Christy Miller are here with us going to share about raising children with special needs. There's plenty more to come. We'll be right back. Please don't go away. Welcome back. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and today we bring to you a lovely couple, Campbell and Christy Miller, who are the parents of special needs children. They have two beautiful boys, Jackson and Cruz. You could go to the website EWTN.ie and um, learn about their 
uh, right. movies and films and everything Campbell's that doing they are. Great work in Ireland with EWTN yes. plus producing those two great films that mm -hmm. we mentioned earlier. So EWTN dot I E is how you can reach Campbell. Well, we first we want to find out how the both of you met. Your wife, apparently she is American, but she grew up in northern Thailand because her parents were missionaries. So tell our family a little bit about yourselves, how you two met, and uh, your journey of faith. Well, first of all, thank you very much for having us on your show. Um, it's great to be uh, on it. And yeah, Going to that story, um, I, I was attending college at Ball State. I was doing classes there, and I, so I was taking some time off. I was a college lecturer at the time, and when I was there, Christy was on a break. Um, Christy grew up in Thailand. Her mother and father were missionaries, and she was over there visiting her brother at the time. And Christy actually was working in Laos. Um, which she can tell us a bit more about, but it, uh, we, we, we happened to end up in houses that were next to each other and uh, met up through a, a church that owned both of the houses at that time. Perfect. Christy, let's hear from you. Yeah, well, I did grow up in Northern Thailand. I moved there when I was about two months old, and then I went to university in Georgia so not too far away from where you all are. And then after I decided to move to Laos and I worked there for five years doing development work and I was on a break and I did meet Campbell. He was the neighbor from far away. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story. And how many years have you both been married? 12, thir almost 13. Yeah. Perfect. Wonderful. Yeah. You're a beautiful couple. Well, share with oh, thank us. You. Share with us uh, just a little bit about your your lives and, and raising children, one or more children. Uh, it's, a, it's a huge and blessed task, and I would imagine that children with special needs um, makes it you know, even more demanding. And just how, how do you kind of manage just loving your children, parenting children, their special needs, and, and the work uh, that you're doing, especially you, Campbell. I mean, you're... You're, you know, with EW10 in, in Ireland and producing and doing work. And how does this all kind of work together? Or does it work together most days and not some days? Or how do you manage all this? Well, uh, that's the thing. We're, we're in a, um, a job that is quite demanding. Um, you know, yourselves, I'm, I'm sure you know that uh, it can be quite antisocial. So in normal circumstances, that, that can be quite difficult, especially when you have maybe a lot of filming and weekends and uh, in the evenings and that. So uh, I, I try to make as much time uh, for the family. And that, that's something that I try and, you know, if, if I am away for weekends, then I make sure that I can spend time with Christy Bruce and Jackson uh, the following weekend, that there's not going to be any interruptions in that. And, uh, that sort of works, but it only works because of what Christy is really doing in the background. Um, I think anybody that works in television or in the film, it's the people in the background that really hold the family together uh, during that time because you're away quite a bit um, and you're away and missing uh, important moments. So having Christy there, um, and having my family that live quite close by, my mom and dad only live a few doors away, so nice. they've been a, a lot of help in looking mm. after the kids. Thank God, because you're both working, right? We are, yeah, I work part-time, so it's about two and a half days a week. So um, I sort of work the kids' schedules around that, and if they have extra appointments, do them in the days I'm not working. Mm -hmm. So it works, yeah. Well, introduce us, introduce us, if you would, to your, your precious boys, your beautiful family. We just saw some of the pictures that are, that are going up there. And so share with us, uh, it's Cruz is your oldest, and then Jackson's your youngest. Tell us again their ages and a little bit about them and their special needs. Okay. Yeah, do you want to? Oh, yeah. Cruz is, he's just turned eight years old, and um, he's actually was around the time Jackson was born, Cruz was diagnosed with having autism. 
and we highly suspected at the time he had ADHD as well, which um, they diagnosed that a little bit later, just to make sure. Um, and then during that time, Jackson was born and Jackson has Down syndrome. Mm. So that's their special extra things. But really, like when you have special needs kids, they're kids first. And so you do all the normal stuff mm -hmm. you do with kids and then there's extra stuff on top of that. Mm -hmm. Right. So, well, you know yeah. that as having, uh, being a mother, you, these are just your sons who just so yeah. happen to have special needs. And then yeah, you, exactly. you learn to adapt and you address it. And, and, um, and then God gives you special graces uh, to raise and love these babies. At what um, age of gestational age of development did you know that Jackson was going to be a Down syndrome baby? It was quite early on. We actually found out um, it was the same month in which we were told Cruz had uh, oh. autism. Um, so, I, I don't know, were you but two months? Oh, no, no, it's later than that. Four oh. or five. Okay. <laughs> Four or I'm, five. I'm not the best. Halfway yes. through, yeah, around halfway through. Okay, yeah. good. So. And so how did you process all of that, learning about your son being autistic, and then the same month you learned that you were uh, going to give birth to a Down syndrome child? How did that affect your faith? How did it affect your marriage? And how did it affect the rest of your family members? Yeah. Well, I think that actually makes your faith stronger because, you know, you're depending on it a lot more. So I think in that way, it's almost good for your faith because you see it more and you're depending on it more. But, and also with family, it's sort of the same thing. You depend on each other more. Mm -hmm. So I think it works out okay, but it's also can be stressful, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine that it, that it really is a process. I mean, we, even, even with great, yeah. great faith, great faith, and you know it's yeah. going to be okay. We just spoke earlier on about the ascension, about the power of the Holy Spirit. We know Christ wins the victory, so we got to keep our eyes focused upon that. And yet, the demands and, and thinking this through and, and uh, you know, I guess most of us hope and pray everything's going to be absolutely fine with the child and so on. Although, you know, I, I remember speaking with, yeah. with, a, with a man who was born without arms. And, uh, and so we were speaking about his special needs, you know? But he said, I don't think of them as special needs. I think that everybody has their own special conditions. So I have mine and everybody can see them, but you have yours and everybody has theirs. Um, yet it's a, it, it's a process. So share with us a little bit about going through the process where there are times where, you know, you were just you know, asking God or how do I walk through this or what is this gonna mean? And don't we have enough with one child having special needs? Like, you know, what, what, what's, what's going on? Or, or was it pretty much, I just accept and I'm moving on? Um, you did, we did sort of accept it, but one of the things that does creep in early on is you're worried um, when you're not here, you know, when, when we're gone and the two boys are, are left. Um, I'm an only child and my mother's an only child, so uh, we don't have any other family in Ireland. Um, that, that's just a, a very small family here, just my mom and dad. So th that's a thought that always comes into your mind. Um, and that was something that I struggled with, you know, for quite some time. But then a friend of mine, Father Colin Crossy, um, he, he brought up uh, a few communities and he talked to uh, uh, the large community and what they do and other communities similar to that. And uh, it, it made us realize that the, the kids are going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And what we have also saw from Cruz um, as he has grew up, um, he really has adapted to the autism and ADHD very well. Um, he's doing really well in school uh, and outside of school um, in normal circumstances. Uh, things are great. I'm sure, you know, now he has found it a bit more difficult with the isolations and um, that with the world is going through here with coronavirus. But yes. in, in, no, in normal circumstances, um, he, he's, he's doing great. And I suppose we see them both as Cruz and Jackson. So if you removed 
the disabilities from them, then you're really removing part of them. You're removing their personalities, mm -hmm. and uh, they wouldn't be our kids. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Cruz is doing pretty well. He already has an acting career. I mean, I've, I've seen him in a, I've seen him in a short minute spots uh, on EWTN. I mean, they're a minute long, and they're really beautiful. And so he's one of the children that's there. I thought the actor was you, but I could see by the red hair you weren't that guy. Yeah. And, uh, no, 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 no. But I'm basically behind camera. <laughs> but they're beautifully, beautifully done, and he does a, a great job and uh, is, is a pretty good actor considering what he has, ADHD. You know, who knows what's going to happen there at any moment, but he does it so beautifully and so well. You know, you mentioned the, uh, the support you have with family. I think I heard you mention something about different communities that, that uh, are with children like this, and you get to share and you get to talk. And, you know, what you shared about, I'm not only concerned about now, I'm concerned about the future. It's right. kind of like, well, your children are, you know, two or three years old, and this was, I mean, what, but yeah, I, I'm thinking back to other people with special needs children, and they always, they kind of bring that up to me when I'm with them, that, Here's how they're planning for the future or what's going to take place. That You always got to be thinking that way. Um, so that, that was interesting what you had to say. Speak to us more about support, not only about the communities, not only about your family, but uh, what's the support for you spiritually? Where are you pulling from? Whether it's the sacraments, maybe it's particular saints. Um, who are the witnesses to you who are supporting you through this time, kind of supernaturally, so to speak? Yeah, um, I suppose the church has been a great help for us both. Um, you know, I have a friend, uh, Father Colin Crossy, and Father Colin was the parish priest here in Newcastle, and he he has been very helpful in um, you know just speaking into what we're going through at the time. Um, He's also a, a great friend and professionally because uh, at one time I thought. When all of this was happening, I didn't know if I was going to have a career in film. I didn't realize if that was going to happen. It was uh, Father Colin that uh, actually inspired me to go back into movie making again. And um, so there's that, and, and prayer is something that we both fall back on. And mm -hmm. um, you know, asking for help. And uh, <laughs> what what we have found is that we we're always granted it. You know. We're, we get a lot of help um, from friends and from family. And the boys do, although it's a small family we have here, um, but they manage to bring everybody together, mm. and uh, which is great. Beautiful. Yeah. You know, you, as a parent, you know, no matter whatever your child conditions are, they're always going to follow your lead. Um, if they see you, you know, loving Jesus, loving each other. They're going to follow all everything as you function. Um, when you cry out for help to God, just say, Lord, give me patience, give me, give me kindness, give me courage, give me faith, you know. Um, they, they catch that, and they're watching you. They don't know they're any different, right? I mean, they're just like, hey, this is how I'm wired. This is how God made me, and I'm a gift. I'm a gift to my mother, um, and you're all a gift to one another. Amen. And only our very good Lord could orchestrate that beautiful treasure of this beautiful family for all of you. Well, Campbell and Christy, we're going to take a break at this point. We're going to hold you over for the next segment. So we're going to take a break. We'll be right back with Christy and Campbell and sharing about their precious children who have some special needs. We'll be right back. Don't go away. And Christy, it's wonderful to be back with you once again, uh, just to speak about children, about your children and about family. And I just hear the Lord, you know, unless we humble ourselves and become like children, we cannot enter the kingdom of God. And all children are just precious and beautiful uh, in, their, in their own ways. And, uh, you know, no perfect children. You know, we live in a society where everything has to be perfect mm -hmm. and this is the way it has to be. And we have to be, but it's just, you know, 
it, it just doesn't happen that way. So we're speaking about your precious, beautiful children, special needs. But as I mentioned earlier, every child has mm -hmm. special needs. Every human being has special needs. And I was commenting to you, I think, earlier on, your little Jackson with Down syndrome, I mean, he looks, uh, the pictures that I'm seeing, he's, he's like by the pool and he's there and it's like, he, he looks like he could be a little wrestler or something. <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about him. Yeah, Jackson. Jackson is quite uh, quite strong. He uh, he loves he loves water. Um, that that that's something that you know he really craves for. And Jackson, unfortunately, at the moment is is nonverbal, so okay. it's very hard to work out. You know um, what he's thinking, or sometimes what he wants. But uh, we we get very quickly. We get to learn if he's happy. Um, and especially if uh, things aren't going well, uh, we get quite the quite the scream out, and then that gets everybody jumping, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, he's he's got a really great character. Um, he loves playing with his brother, and the one thing that Cruz is 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 very protective of him, and because mm. uh, Cruz Cruz loves him very much, and. Um, they have a lot of fun together as brothers. Beautiful. You know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, Christy, you know, about Our Lady uh, carrying Our Lord in the womb. You know, when John Paul II, uh, St. John Paul II, spoke about Mary pondering, pondering Jesus beginning in the womb and then after, you know, the birth and through his years and so on and interceding for him and, and loving him. Uh, tell us a little bit about your own pondering, your own intercessory prayer for your children, and what these two boys have taught you uh, in terms of life and your own spirituality. Oh. Oh. Wow, I don't even know where to start. I think things change a lot when you know you're going to have a child. And like with Jackson, we chose to find out whether or not he had the Down syndrome for sure before he was born because we did want to process through all of that in our head before the day. So that was actually really important to us. And I'm so glad we did it because then he he was born and it was just a happy day, mm -hmm. do you know? And it was so delightful. And, you know, we didn't have to worry about that because we'd gone through that process already. So that worked for us. And I think... Like when you know you're having any child, you spend lots of time in prayer about it because it's just such a big thing to raise a human being and you want to do it in the way that you raise the best person possible who they're really meant to be. Mm -hmm. That's right. Beautiful. So wonderful. Campbell, Campbell, we only have a couple of minutes left, but just share with us as, as the Joseph in the family, um, your concerns for these young boys into the future, and also your hope for them? Yeah, I, I suppose um, one thing is the father, you'll you want to be there to uh, help lead your kids and um, you know show them the best way and uh, how to live life. And you're there also as a protector. And um, th that's something with kids with special needs, that you, you, you're always wanting to protect them. You want the best for them. Uh, you want them to do really well at, at what they're doing. And um, you want people to uh, respect them um, as, as human beings. So you have all of that. But um, with Cruz, we have, we have noticed that he, he is developing really well, um, just like any other child. And, a lot of those worries that I may have had uh, earlier uh, have really started to disappear, and we realize that he will accomplish quite a lot in his lifetime, and, and there will be no difference from any other child. But you do worry a bit about Jackson, because we, we do understand that uh, developmentally he, he is that a uh, bit further behind. But the one thing that I can be very thankful for is that Jackson has a great brother who we know is going to look after him. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and that's wonderful. And as a family, you know, you have, you'll never know the profound witness that you're having because there are people, you know, who live under the illusion that every child should be perfect. And the numbers are staggering when women find out that they're having a Down syndrome child to abort and how our society has just yeah. disposed of these
precious little angels that God sends to us all. So okay. thank you for your bold witness. Thank you for thank your you. courage. Thank you for your faith. And we really do look forward to having you back here on Friday. So to everyone out there, our EWTN family, remember you are never alone and you're always at home with Jim and with Joy and you are a precious child of God. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.